I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the Genesis G70. Now you might remember a car called the Hyundai Genesis, a large luxury sedan launched by the Korean brand here in 2014. Well now that car's nameplate has morphed into a premium brand called Genesis, much like Lexus is to Toyota, and in the two model lineup that includes the old car now rebadged as the G80, the more contemporary G70 is the headline car. Now normally we'd be going through the interior first, but seeing the twin turbo G70 3.3T is all about its performance and dynamics, I'm going to jump behind the wheel first. There are two engine variants in the G70 range, a 2 litre turbo petrol with 179 kilowatts and 353 newton metres and a ballsy 3.3 litre twin turbo V6 with 272 kilowatts and 510 newton metres, each tied to an 8 speed automatic developed in house by Hyundai Motor Corporation. Now for anyone well versed in the Kia Stinger, both of these drivetrains should be familiar and that's because they're shared as is the platform DNA under this G70. The G70 is smaller than the Stinger, however, riding on a 28 35 mm wheelbase, which makes it 70 mm shorter. And you can feel that in the back seat and the boot, though more about that later. What you can feel in the G70 is just how well finessed the dynamics of this car are. It is a more well-rounded and polished car to drive than the Stinger is, and as it should be, because it needs to compete against the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes C-Class, Audi A4, blah, 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 blah. What you can notice though is the G70 is a clear step above its Asian competitors, the aging Lexus IS and the very flawed Infiniti Q50. In fact, it's not even worth mentioning those cars when you're talking about the dynamics of this car. Now we're in the top 3.3T Ultimate Sport. This is the flagship G70 at pretty much 80K. That competes against the 330i and other German cars like that that are cheaper, but this car packs so much punch. 0 to 104.7 seconds, if you believe what Genesis claims, and a 270k an hour top speed, which is exactly the same as the top spec Kia Stingers. The engine itself isn't new. It's a Lambda 2 engine related to the 3.3 in <coughs> the Kia Sorento and other not very exciting SUVs but with two turbos on it and the tuning and the refinement of this car, it actually has a really lusty, torquey, effortless appeal. It feels good to sit behind it. It's great through corners where you can use all that torque to sort of help the tail step out a little bit and point the car in the right direction without it being too scary. And it's quick. It's safe for overtaking. It's actually pretty refined. I don't mind the sound of it, which is a surprise because it's not always that great when it doesn't have turbos on it. The 2 litre is still quite punchy, but it has a synthesised induction sound that is probably not so natural and relaxing like the V6, and I suppose it depends on where you sit and your opinion with those things, but I don't know, just the lack of natural engine sound to me just seems like a cheat sheet. Uh, in terms of the rest of the driving dynamics of the V6, what it feels is planted. Now this isn't a light car, it probably weighs high 1700s in this spec, but you feel four square on the road. And even in the comfort mode that we're in now, and you can see that there's a little bit of jiggle in the suspension here, but not uncomfortably so, the car just feels squat, like jammed down on the road. And in the corners, you have this immediacy in the steering. As soon as you start to turn in, there's no slack at straight ahead. In fact, I would dare say that the G70 has better on center steering than the new gen BMW 3 Series, if not quite that poise and that pivot that it, the BMW has when it turns in. I suppose that means that ultimately the Genesis doesn't quite have that dynamic X factor that is such a big part of the new 3 Series, but for a first attempt from a Korean manufacturer to make a car that has to compete against the German Triumvirate, I think the G70 is so close and I don't think that many people can really pick on anything that it does. It's one of the few cars where you can drive it in comfort or sport, in fact leave it in sport all of the time and not have the steering irritatingly heavy or the drive too heavy footed and clumpy. It's actually really nice. In fact, the steering's better in sport than in comfort and that's really rare for a Hyundai. It's not a Hyundai, it's a Genesis. But um, 
for a car related to a Hyundai. How about that? Um, just going through this corner here, just really easy to turn in, really easy to put power on the way out, doesn't slide around too much. Our drive program yesterday was saturated, and yet the car still felt planted and stable, riding on staggered width Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tyres. Um, you can see that there's bandwidth in this car going forward for something with more performance, and they did say we're always working on more performance, so hey, there may be something coming in the future, but as it stands now, I think the G70 has everything it needs to be able to tick most boxes for most people in terms of the way it drives. One of the intriguing things about the G70 is that when you're dialing through the drive mode here and you flick it into sport, it actually tweaks in the steering bolsters around your body and tightens the seat, which is something that I can't think of any other car actually doing. And if you want to turn, or brave enough, to turn the ESC and traction completely off, then you can actually hold gears to redline without the transmission shifting up with these cute little silver paddles on the steering wheel, which is helpful if you're doing a track day. And I think this car probably could do one of those if you wanted to. It does have Brembo brakes, um, 350mm front discs, 340 at the back, with six piston calipers and four piston calipers. And judging from our spirited driving during the launch program, I actually think that they do a pretty good job, certainly on the road. I don't know about on a track, but it's capable of doing it, and that's something. Now, because the G70 is competing smack bang in the premium medium segment, it is a traditional three-box sedan, just like the 3 Series, the C-Class, the A4, and those other European and Japanese cars that it competes directly against. It's actually quite a long sedan, though. It's almost 4.7 metres long. It has a 0.28 CD, which is reasonable, but it's the muscularity and some of the details on the car that actually make it interesting. Like it has this cool dummy hockey stick vent on the front guard here. This Ultimate Sport version, which is the top spec car, has these five spoke 19 inch wheels with this really nice gloss charcoal finish. And I love this copper detailing in the headlights on this adaptive front lighting system, which is on this model. Of the six models, this is the top, and it's $80,000. There are three V6 models and three four-cylinder two-liter models starting at $59,300. But if you want all the bells and whistles, you'll need almost 80 grand for your Genesis G70. Compared to the staid conservatism and the age of the larger G80, the G70 is much more contemporary inside. It has this really nice horizontal design theme. The way it layers this stitched section on the top of the dash, on this trim insert, on this different section of plastic here, and it is a little bit A4-esque in the way that it does that, but it is so much nicer than the thick and bulky look of the new 3 Series dash that I think the people are going to get in this car and actually be quite impressed. Now, the quality is really good too. The, from the leather on the steering wheel with these perforated sections here where you put your hands, in this case, in this car, with this diamond quilting on the seats with Nappa leather and red stitching in this car, all blue in a blue car, and these cool Remington steel speaker grills on the doors. There is a, definitely a high quality feel to this car, though it isn't without fault. These uh, switches in the center here feel really nice to turn, but the plastic chrome on them is really obviously plastic and then we come to the infotainment system which I don't know like from a publishing background looking at the font on this thing it looks like the dummy that's waiting for the actual font to go in it's just too junior and and doesn't fit the class of the instruments and the other graphics from the center section here in the instruments and the really wide and really well detailed head-up display they just don't match that at all that belongs in a Hyundai not in a Genesis, and I can think you can expect that to be improved in the future. Uh, we also have all of this switch gear in the center here, which again is pretty good quality, but it's just really simple. I love the way the rear and the front demisters just hang down like these little beards underneath all the things. It's, we've also got seat cooling here and seat heating and steering wheel heating on the same side as the steering wheel. It's not rocket science, but just the simplicity of it works really well. We've got a wireless phone charger here next to one USB port, auxiliary and 12 volt outlet, another fast charge USB in the armrest here, and we've got another one for backseat passengers here. So they're definitely covering all the multimedia basics. 
Now we are in a sports sedan here, a cab backward one, so we are sitting quite low and quite far back in the chassis, but I don't think that the seats really fulfil the brief that they need to given the performance of this car. The driving position in general is pretty good, and the steering wheel is great to hold, but even though you've got 16-way adjustment in this Ultimate Sport, there isn't enough under-thigh support, and I don't know, it just makes it feel like it's suffering from the same faults that all other Korean cars seem to have. Again, you can only fit 600ml bottles in the doors, you can't fit anything in the rear doors, and it's those things that time and again keep coming back as something that really needs to be sorted out. Now, the back seat. Now the back seat is definitely second class in this car. While you've got a pretty good view and the seat itself is okay, my feet are so wedged under the seat where I have it down low that it's almost like ab crunch time, you know? And even though I've got a three setting seat, heat adjuster here, and air vents here, I just don't know whether I want to sit here for a really long amount of time. We have an armrest here with two cup holders in the center here, but a very high transmission tunnel. So essentially renders the G70 a four seater and kind of ironically, considering that it doesn't really have that much leg room, we've got these adjusters here on the passenger seat, probably for the Chinese market, where you can move the front seat forward. The problem is you'd probably need to have it wedged into the dashboard to give you enough leg room and make you feel like you're enjoying the luxury in a car that's so obviously driver focused. In a similar vein to the back seat, the boot in the G70 is probably no more than about adequate. The claim is 330 litres VDA for in here, and it probably looks a little bit bigger than that. It's certainly flat if you drop the back seat backrests down because it can go all the way through, but this is not a big boot. 330 litres is a small hatchback volume, and this is competing against cars like the 3 Series that have 480 litres and they're rear drive cars. I suppose it does have a space saver spare in here, which the BMW certainly doesn't, but I don't know, is it enough? What I do like though, and what I think is definitely enough, is the styling of the back of this car. Look how broad and lovely it is. Love these tail lights, they look great at night time. And these three light up when you have the brake lights on too. It just has this stance and this muscularity to it that definitely sort of emphasizes what this car is about. And it isn't about backseat space, and it probably isn't about boot space either. It's about making the driver feel good about the way their car looks and the way that it drives, and the G70 definitely succeeds in that department. Now, the other interesting thing about Genesis is they won't have any traditional dealerships. They'll only have Genesis Studios, and for the time being, there will only be one. It'll be in Sydney, opening on Monday, June the 24th, to be followed by one in Melbourne and one in Brisbane in 2020. In those cities, if you want a test drive a Genesis, you can have one delivered to you by a Genesis representative. But in Sydney, it means that you can buy a car without any haggling. It's a fixed price. You can buy it online. Everything is up front. No BS. None of that stuff that people are afraid of. And I suppose for a car that is fresh on the market with a brand that is untested, but in a country that is quite open to owning South Korean cars and liking their reliability. In fact, Genesis just won the US JD Power Survey for the second year running for reliability in the first, what, 100 days of ownership. There's something tangible and something persuasive about that buying experience. Admittedly, the back end isn't sorted in terms of where the second-hand cars are going to be sold. Is there going to be a guaranteed value at the end of the time? But I think given how strong and how handsome and how well-equipped the G70 is, I actually think that it might do pretty well in this country. Would I buy one in that spec, looking like that? Yeah, I would. Now, if you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment on the Genesis G70 or on Chasing Cars. Thanks for watching.